civil machines was a trade off of force and uh, displacement, right? Everybody remember that? Civil machines is a trade off of force and displacement. You could use a lot less force if you pushed it a lot further. And we multiply force times displacement and we actually have work, right? Or energy. Okay. Now, then we went to gears, right? I feel like we've been in simple machines and gears the entire time. Then we went to gears. What was the trade off for gears? Who remembers? Big gear to a small gear. What was your trade off for those? Torques, right? Which is a which is like a force times a perpendicular displacement. Remember how we calculated torques? You know, if you're in physics, you definitely remember because that's what we're doing right now. You, you had a force going down like this, and you measured out to here. You took it times this to get your torque, right? Torque is like force times r. Remember that? Okay, so gears was torque and what? If I went to a small gear to a turn to a big gear, I'm going to increase the torque. But what if I turn the big gear and I turn the small gear? That increased what? Big gear down to a smaller gear made everything do what? Move faster. Spin faster, right? Remember, it was the angular velocity or rotational velocity. Remember that? Remember the symbol what that was for? What symbol did we use for the angular velocity, the angular speed, how fast it's going? Like RPMs. It was a Greek letter. Omega. Remember that part or not? No, don't remember that? Remember we did gear ratios, we did gear ratios. And so it was like, uh, you know, torque out over torque in, right? Or you could do like number of teeth out over number of teeth in. You could do diameter out or diameter in or radius out or radius in or circumference out or circumference. There was a whole bunch of outs over in. But then there was one that was angular velocity and it was in over out is how you, it was reversed for the gear ratio, right? Because if you're going from small to big, that you're always increasing your torque. Okay, but if you go from big to small, you're going to increase your velocity the other way, right? So it's an inverse thing. So, so gears was a trade off of torque and angular speed. And here's interesting. So for simple machines, if it take force times displacement, you have work. For gears, if you take torque times angular velocity, you got what? You actually get power. There's another equation for power. Power equals torque times your angular speed. How fast it's rotating. Okay, so there's a trade-off for this. You increase your torque, your angular speed will go down. You increase your angular speed, that means your torque's going down, and your power would like to be staying the same for that particular thing. Okay. All right, so, um, so what we're gonna to try to do here is we're gonna look at a motor, okay? And we're gonna be doing this. I'm gonna go out and get a 393 motor. And we're gonna uh, have it going. We're gonna put a amount of voltage on it, okay? And it's gonna spin, okay? At a certain voltage, it's gonna spin at a certain rate. But if, we're not gonna put anything on the axle, okay? So there's no torque on it at all. And we're going to measure how fast it spins. That is called angular velocity, like not or zero. Okay. This is called no load speed. All right. This is the, as fast as it can spin. As long as you don't put anything on the axle, it's going to spin at a certain rate, depending on the voltage, right? If you increase the voltage, it's going to spin faster. But I'm just saying for a given voltage, like three volts, we'll say, there's a, a no load speed for these motors. Okay. Now, what happens if I start putting torque on the axle? I, I try to make the thing like lift a weight or something. And then I make a heavier weight and a heavier weight. What's eventually going to happen? The motor is going to stop working, right? Okay. Because you're putting torque on it, right? You're putting more torque and more torque and more torque. Eventually, you'll put on enough torque. And torque is kind of like a little... It's a symbol looks like this. It's called a tau. Three symbols, tau. 
eventually you're going to get enough torque on here that the motor is going to stall out. We call that stall torque. Okay, there's a stall torque. This is the amount of torque that you put on a motor before the motor stops working. Okay, and our motors in there, they're, they're, that used to be bad. But now they're all, all these motors are built with a thing that it stalls it out and you take off the torque and you let it rest for a little bit and then it goes away. It doesn't burn anything out and ruin the motor. Okay, it'll just kind of shut it off. Okay, so there's a trade off here between no torque at all, and you're going to go your maximum velocity that's called the no load speed, or you put a lot of torque on it and eventually your angular velocity is going to go down to zero. It's not going to spin at all because it stalls, right? And so there's a stall torque. So if I made a graph of this, I'm on page 96. I'm just kind of redrawing some stuff here. If I make a graph, okay, of angular speed and uh, torque, which is torque, okay. This, I think this is, you know, these pages look kind of complicated. I don't think they should be. Let's just think about this. Let's, let's see what a graph would be like. Let's say that I'm right here. How much torque is right here? Here's my x-axis is torque and my y-axis is the speed of the motor. So right here, the torque is zero. If there's zero torque on a motor, how fast can it spin? Like if there's zero torque, in, we, have, we have power, the, the, the motor's going, we put voltage on a motor. It's spinning, right? We don't have any torque on it at all. It's gonna be spinning as fast as it possibly can go, right? It's gonna be spinning at, what we call no load speed, right? That's the maximum. It's gonna be going fast. I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere way up here, right? Right there would be no load speed. What happens as I go up the x-axis? I start adding torque to the uh, motor. What's gonna happen to the angular velocity? It's gonna go down, okay? Now, um, you know, how does it go down? This might be, you know, it might, people might know this, but it actually goes down linear, okay? So it's gonna go down, it's gonna start going down like this, okay? You add more and more torque, it's gonna keep the angular speed still gonna drop, it's gonna go slower and slower and slower, right? Until you get all the way down to here, and what torque would this be right here? How much torque is right here? What do we call it? We call it the stall torque, right? You know, whatever it is, it's a, a certain amount of torque that the, it stalls the motor out completely. And what's the angular velocity going to be at that point? Zero. It's not going to be spinning anymore, right? So, so if there's no torque, you have it's spinning really fast. If you start adding more and more torque, it starts slowing down, and eventually, um, it's going to be zero. It's, it's not going to go at all because it's been stalled out. This is the stall torque. Okay. Now. This is a straight line, right? So we're gonna be in the math here, okay? So stay with me. Does anybody know the mathematical formula for a straight line? Sometimes it's called the y-intercept formula. Who remembers what it is? If you've had a math class, you should know this. Like any math class, actually. What is it? Right. Everybody remember that? Y equals mx plus b. That is the equation for a straight line. Correct? Okay. Let's, let's plug in some of our variables because we're analyzing the, the speed of the motor and the torque of the motor. Okay. What's y? In our graph right here, what is, what's y? Y is speed, right? Y is or w, the w, the w. Angular velocity is on the y-axis, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that right there. Okay, um, let's skip the slope just a little bit. What's x? What's on the x-axis? Just just torque, right? Torque. Okay. All right. Uh, plus, I'm gonna skip the slope just a little bit. Plus, uh, what's b? What's b supposed to be? Y intercept, what does that mean? That sounds fancy. It means where the graph crosses over the vertical, right? The Y axis. Where does this graph cross over the Y axis? Not where. It's the, 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 
the no load speed angular velocity, right? The fastest one it's going to go. So it's going to be plus, you know, like this. Okay. Now, what's the slope of this line? How do you calculate slope? Rise over run. Okay. And is this a positive or a negative slope? It's going downhill, right? So I'm going to have a negative, right? And then what's the rise? I can take two points. They're very easy points here and here, right? What's the rise? No load speed, right? So no load speed over. What's the run? Stall towards. Okay. So there is kind of an equation on this graph of that, of that line, right? And there it is right there in the middle of page 96. Okay. So I wanted to do it that way because if you looked at the middle of page 96, you'd be like, what in the world? This is like crazy. It's going to be super hard. Um, it's not that hard, right? I mean, we, we, we know the formula and we can plug in all the things and, and derive that equation there ourselves. Now, by the way, so on this graph, what is the power right here at that place? Remember, power is torque times angular velocity. What would the power be right up here? Angular velocity is a big number. What's the torque? What's the torque? Zero. So what's big number times zero? Zero. There is no power. Zero power. What about the power right here? What's the torque? It's a big number, right? What's the angular velocity? It's zero. What's the big number times zero? Zero. There's zero power here. Okay. Guess what the power would be right here in the middle? Would there be power in the middle somewhere here? Is there torque? Yes. Right? There's half the amount of the stall torque, right? And is there angular velocity? Yes. Right? So, so definitely power. So if it's zero here and it's zero here, what did it have to do as it went up this way? The power actually had to start going up, right? And then right here, if it's gonna get back down to zero, down here, the power started to actually need to be going back down again. So right here in the middle is the sweet spot. This whole lecture is all about one simple little real thing, okay? Where is the, where is the motor operating at its maximum power? That's, that's what we're trying to get to. How do you make a motor operate at its max power. The max power is right here in the middle here. And that is actually half of the stall torque. So if you, you put, you make sure that you figure out what the stall torque is of a motor. And usually this comes like in the specs of a motor. Usually you'll get a motor and there'll be a little sheet and it'll tell you the stall torque is this. It'll tell you that because engineers will know that, okay, if I have that motor operating about half of that torque, it'll be operating at its maximum power. That's all I have to know is that it has to be half of its stall torque going to be operating at its maximum power. If I want to set something up, I can gear something so that it's actually outputting the correct amount or inputting the correct amount of torque that's at half of its stall torque. Okay, so if you look at the bottom of page 96, um, the, these, these, are, these are all going to be straight lines. When you graph speed versus torque, they'll all be straight lines. But they could be different. You know, they could be further out because of the amount of voltage. So, you know, a three volt, a five volt, a seven volt, you're going you're gonna to go further out. You're going to be able to have, you know, more torque on something that has a higher voltage. That's really, that's all that's referring to. Okay. All right. Um, so this, this next part is going to really probably get into the weeds here. Um, so power is torque times angular velocity. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to make a new graph. This was this was angular velocity versus torque. I want to make a, a new graph that is uh, power versus torque. Okay. All right. I mean, I can just go to the end right here and just, you know, I basically I've already told you what we're trying to get to eventually, so I can be done. But I think this is good math stuff here. 
So, so watch this. So here's our here's an equation for our graph for angular velocity versus torque. I want to make it a, a graph that's power versus torque. So what do I have to do to this graph to get this graph? Well, torque and torque, that's, that's the x-axis is the same. I'm doing the x-axis. But what do I have to do to this y-axis to get this one? How do I go from angular velocity to power? This is not going to be nearly as complicated as you think it looks. It looks complicated in this page. It's not. How do you go? How am I going to get to? If I have angular velocity, how do I calculate power? I have angular velocity. I want power. So what do I have to do to this angular velocity? According to this equation, I got to multiply it by torque, right? If I take this axis times torque, right, I'll have power. Does that make sense? Okay. So really what I want to do is like down here in this equation, here's an equation. I want to take this side times torque, right? Because then I'll have an equation for power, right? If I take torque times this side, torque times angular velocity is power, right? Now, the problem is if you do something to one side, what do you have to do to the other side? You have to do the same thing, right? So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by torque. Okay? Torque times this side, and then we take torque times you know, this side here. Okay? So torque times angular velocity is power. That one's easy. Okay? What is torque times this whole thing? Well, you still have minus. Angular um, no load speed over uh, stall torque times, and this is this was times torque. Now this is times torque squared. Right? I just do that. Just just nod and stay with me. <laughs> okay. I'm just not. I'm not gonna. You're not gonna be tested over this exact part here. I just want to show you this now. Okay. And then plus, and this was angular velocity. Now it's gonna be angular velocity times times torque. Right now, this equation fairly easy for most people. It's a straight line. Anybody know what this equation is? Torque squared, torque, and a constant. Ax squared plus bx plus c. You guys recognize that? Quadratic, right? That's what that's what we just turned this into. There's a torque squared, a torque, and then I, I can do minus power equals zero, right? This is a quadratic, it's a parabola, right? So when I took the torque times this thing, I turned it into a downwards, there's a negative, it's a downwards facing parabola. It looks like, like this. So this point right here, remember, we already said the power is zero right there, right? And see now on here, it is zero. And down here, the power was zero, and, and it is right here, right? Okay, this is, this is the stall torque still, right? Right here in the middle is half stall torque, half, half stall torque. Okay, and right here, what do we got? Max power, right? I mean, we, we, we kind of showed all that right here. I think you probably understood it right over here, but just to graphically show it, it took torque times this equation so that we could actually have power and re-graph it as power versus torque. And then you can really see it, that the max power peak is at half of the stall torque. Okay? And I know that that is, you know, that's a lot of stuff. Just to get to the one point that max power happens at half stall torque. So if you can know the stall torque of a motor, you can cut it in half, and you'll know that that's the operating torque that you would need to be if you want your motor to be working at, at max power. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay, so um, 
three problems on page 98. Let's just look at those real quick. Three problems on page 98, and then we're going to call it. So what's the stall for? Well, torque is torque is just force times the radius, right? Okay. Now I'm not going to worry about converting these things. I don't. I'm not going to worry about converting them. We're just going to call the torque in uh, what would this one be? Pound inches, right? Pound inches. So all I do here is 1.4 uh, times three. So 1.4 times three equals uh, 4.2 uh, pound inches is the stall torque, okay? We don't obviously want to be operating at that because the motor's not going to work at that. I mean, the motor froze up. That's what we that's what we did. We did that test real quick to figure out what the stall torque was because maybe it wasn't printed on the sheet or something. We just really quickly figure out what the stall torque is. We're going to actually literally do this, I think, as we get time for some hands-on activity. So, okay, so that's the first thing. Now, in three eleven, says the same motor. The same motor, so this motor that we're using, we know what the stall torque is, right? But the same motor above is turning a drum below, and look in that picture there, uh, that is lifting a weight. So there's a weight that's wrapped around the drum. And so you're, you have a motor right on the drum, it's spinning the drum, and the drum is turning, and it's just lifting the weight up. Okay, does that make sense? What's happening there? And the weight is uh, 0.2 pounds, okay? And the drum, so the drum, the center of the drum, here's the drum, and there's a weight hanging on here. Okay, and the weight is 0.2 pounds. And the radius of the drum is two inches. Okay. Um, it says, what torque is the motor applying and is the motor working with maximum power? So the motor, you know, the axle comes through the center of this drum. And so it's turning this drum and the weight's being lifted up here. So I, I want to know what torque is this motor having to use to, to do this, okay? It's just directly driving the drum. So torque, again, is force times radius, right? Okay? And so um, the force is uh, 0.2 pounds. And the radius, you know, out here from the axle is 2 inches, right? I think, right? 2 inches. And so what's the torque that this motor is uh, having to use? Two times 0 0.2, 0 0.4, right? 0.4 pound inches, 0.4 pound inches. And the question was, is this, is this motor operating at its maximum power or not? This is how much torque it's using. It'll be operating at its maximum power when it uses how much torque? Huh? It's half of the stall torque, right? Yeah, the, basically the whole lecture today was just for that one statement at the end. You know, forget all the math and everything. We know that a power that a motor operates at maximum power at half whatever its stall torque is. So when we figured out in 310 what the stall torque was, because the stall torque was 4.2. So half stall torque is 2.1 pound inches. And that is the torque, that's like the optimal torque. That's what that kind of means, the optimal torque. It's the torque that if you were working it there, you'd be getting your maximum power you can possibly get out of your motor. Okay? All right. So if we're only using 0.4 pound inches, uh, we're not close to, we're not close to operating maximum power. We need to, the motor needs to be under like 2.1 pound inches to be operating its maximum power. So that brings us to the last question. 312, instead of direct drive, instead of having the motor like right on the drum, let's put the motor on a gear that then moves another gear on the drum. Does that make sense? So that we can get this, so that we get this input at, at a, you know, half the stall torque, right? So what we want to do is figure out what gear ratio would you use so that the motor can be doing 2.1, but you can still be lifting the weight and you know, the output is 0.4. This is how much torque you need. 
right? But this is what we want the torque for the motor to be operating. We don't want it to be operating at, you know, at 0.4. If it's direct drive, it's going to be 0.4 to get to 0.4, right? So we want the the motor, you know, going to like the motor going to like a gear that then is attached to another gear that is actually, you know, uh, turning, you know, turning the drum. Okay, lifting it up. So we want to figure out what's the gear ratio that I could get my motor to be operating its maximum power. That's not too hard. Um, the output torque is lifting the weight. So the output torque is, you know, 0.4, right? That's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what we're trying to do. That's the amount of torque it takes, right? We want our input torque. So if I have the motor right on the drum, the input torque is going to be, you know, 0.4. We don't want that. We want input torque to be half stall, so it's not to be 2.1. So torque output over torque input is gear ratios, right? So torque output we want is uh, 0.4, but the input we want is what? What torque do we want the motor to be doing? 2.1, right? So 0.4 over 2.1. Will give me my uh, gear ratio of this over this. See, I'm going to have a small gear to a big gear, right? Actually, I'm going to have a big gear to a small gear is what I should have. Torque output is a 0.4. This is the the little ones on the drum. So the torque outputs on the small one, and the torque inputs on the big one. So we're actually see we got a gear ratio of less than one here. We're going to be going, you know, we're gearing it down. We're going from a big gear to a small gear. Okay, um, I can do it the other way so I can get a kind of a, like a number to see how much bigger this gear is than this. So if I do like 2.1 divided by 0.4, if I do it reverse, we're around five. So this diameter of this gear or the teeth on this gear is like, you know, about five times more than this. One. Okay, the gear ratio is technically one over five. Right, that means we're going from a, we're going from the big gear to down to a small gear. Okay. Questions on that? I mean, that's 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 pretty in depth. To be honest, that's all kind of pretty in depth. But really, what it came down to was that we want our motors sometimes to be operating at whatever half of the stall torque is at that voltage. You see at different voltages, there's going to be a different stall torque. Right? If you have a lot more voltage, you can put a lot more torque on before it stalls out. So um, I'm talking about at a given voltage, what would I gear the uh, motor at? 